So the month of Shavat and Parashat B'Shalach. The month of Shavat is um, an important month, and we're going to see what, what's important about it during the Shi'ur. Every month in the Hebrew calendar, according to the Ari, has a corresponding letter. The corresponding letter to the month of Shavat is Sadi. And Sadi it represents the righteousness of Hashem and also the righteousness of human beings. There's two ways to pronounce the word. It's either Sadi or Sadiq. So either way, um, that's what it represents. The Gemara in Shabbat says as follows. Sadi kefufa v'tzadi peshuta. Um, sadiq kafuf, tzadiq pashut. Hainu ne'eman kafuf, ne'eman pashut. Chosif lecha hakatuv. Kefifa al kefifa. Mikan what does that mean? You have a bed tzadi. A tzadi, you have two different kinds. One of them is that it, uh, the bottom of it is bent inside, and the other one is that the bottom goes straight down. Two different kinds. If it falls in the middle of a word, the tzadi has a bent bottom. The bottom portion of it is bent. If it falls at the end of a word, the end of it is straight. So that's what the Gemara is talking about. It says we have one sadi that is bent, one that is straight. Um, <clears throat> meaning what? That a tzaddik, a person who is righteous in this world, he is bent over, meaning he bends his will to Hashem's will. But in the world to come, he is straightened out, meaning he can stand up straight in front of Hashem because he didn't you know, do any other or do anything wrong. Um, so the idea that the Gemara is trying to tell us is that the way that a person can achieve this, uh, this idea of being straight and being able to stand in front of Hashem in the world to come properly <coughs> is by being a tzaddik in this world and by being bent, being submissive. The idea of being submissive is what's important. In order for a person to be considered a tzaddik, to be considered as righteous, he must bend himself. Under what? Under the weight of the mitzvot. He puts himself in agony to serve Hashem, even though it's difficult, because he knows his, Hashem's will is more important than my will. Like it says in Tehillim, Tzadik Ketamari Frach Ke'erez Barabanun Yiskeh, that a righteous person, person is like a what? Is like a, um, Tamar is a, a date tree. He will flourish like a date tree, and he will also be like an Erez, Erez is like a tough tree, um, cedar tree of Lebanon. But let's concentrate on the part that says Tamar, Ketamari Frah, like a, um, meaning that in this world, if a, if a person in Sadiq is like a Tamar, what does a Tamar do? What does a, uh, um, a date tree do? It bends. Whatever, if you look at a date tree, if you look at any of these palm trees, when you see storms coming, these trees are able to weather the storm. Why? Because they bend. They're able to bend very, very much and go sway back and forth in the wind. Their leaves might fall off, but the tree is able to withstand this, uh, the onslaught. Why? Because it's able to bend. But in the next world, what's it going to be like? It's going to be like a Lebanon. Lebanon being a cedar tree, cedar tree being a very, very nice, heavy wood that does not bend. That's the idea, that if a person is able to bend in this world, in the next world, he doesn't need to worry. He's going to be able to st stay strong and stiff. So, what, what, are the, um, what are some of the, um, <coughs> um, some of the qualities of a cedar tree? They have fragrant and decay-resistant wood, meaning that nothing can make this rot. It's also insect repellent. It doesn't, uh, the, the, the termites aren't able to affect it as much. It's also lightweight and it's also very durable. These are the, the, these are the um, characteristics of a cedar tree. So too, a human being, if he's able to have, uh, you know, the strength of, actually, the malleability of being bending under Hashem's you know, requirements, which is what, what our whole life is about. Hashem comes and tells you, you know, you're getting into your, uh, your business, you have a business meeting, all of a sudden, Shabbat comes, boom, you have to stop. 
mid-sentence. You have to stop. Time comes, you got to go, close the shop, go home. You know, it comes time for all the holidays, same thing, in the middle of the week, whatever it is. It could be that it's a you know, prime season for a business. Stop. Take a break, and you have to go and serve, serve Hashem. Why? Because he's telling you that there's a spiritual world out there that we need to be in touch with. And if we are not able to bend ourselves and able to you know, put our own desires aside, we don't understand what the whole purpose of this world is. Or the whole purpose of this world is to serve Him and to attain Olam Haba. Not Olam Hazeh. We have to put aside all the material things that we want in this world and concentrate on what He wants from us. So that's the idea of Sadiq and being, being bendable and being malleable, is that when it comes time to doing Hashem's mitzvot, you're able to hold yourself back. For instance, um, Hazal tells us that if a person is able to hold himself back from speaking um, in an argument and when someone is putting him down, it's as if the whole world rests on his shoulders. It's not an easy thing to do, but if a person knows that this is what Hashem wants and he does it, then it's a very good thing. The whole world is resting on his shoulders. So this is the idea of being able to be malleable. That even though it's difficult, even though it's, 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 it's um, seemingly impossible, you have to put yourself aside and concentrate on what Hashem wants. If a person is able to do that, he's going to be strong like a cedar tree. Who is the Sadiq of this month, in this week's parasha? Yisro. What did Yitro do? Yitro went and searched all the religions of the world. He was probably one of the best uh, and best known and the best in general, I guess, idol worshippers that there was. He didn't leave anything in stone unturned as far as idol worship was concerned. And he searched and searched and searched and he saw that all of them were absolutely worthless. And he gave it all up. And he became an outcast after that. The Zohar says, that uh, people would come to him for brachot, they would come to him for blessings before when he was worshipping Avodah Zarah. As soon as he stopped worshipping Avodah Zarah, they threw him out. They, they would spit on him, they would put him down, they didn't care about him, they would attack his daughters, all sorts of things they would do. They didn't want to have anything to do with him. But he didn't care. He said, you know, even though I have all of this covet, even though I have all of these fantastic things going on in my life, what's important? to be malleable, to go after the, the truth. And that's a struggle we have every day in our lives, right? We sometimes find that the easy way is maybe not the way that Hashem wants it to be. And we always have to make that decision. Do I, uh, do I lie or do I not lie? Do I you know, do something that is illegal or do I not? Legal meaning in the sense of uh, Torah and also in the sense of uh, you know, the laws of the land as well because we have to respect those as well. So all of these things, it's a daily constant thing for us. And for us to be able to bend is very difficult. For Yitro, he gave up his entire <coughs> life. Imagine, you're, I don't know how old he was, maybe 50, 60, who knows how old he was. He has everything built up around him. You have an empire built up. Whoever is at the top of Goldman Sachs, I don't know, you name whatever, you know, uh, the top of any organization in this world says, you know what, this is not what it's about. I'm giving it up, I'm leaving it all, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to go do what's right. That's what it's like. That's, that's what a, when a person is able to achieve the term tzaddik. He is able to be considered as being truly righteous. So the one real tzaddik of the entire generation, what is he like? He is like the tree of life. He is like the etzahayim in Gan Eden. And all of the, <clears throat> all of, all of these people who are considered as being the, the tzaddikim of the generation, what they, 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 they are, you know, an aspect of the Etzah Haim. Why? Because they go after life and they go after what is true. So, if you look at the word, the letter Tzadi, Tzadi, the one that's at the end of the word Etz, Etz meaning tree, what is it like? What does it look like? It looks exactly like a tree. It has one stalk coming out and it has two things shooting out of it, just like the branches of a tree shoot out. So, this is what a tzaddik is going to be like in the future, as we mentioned, in Olam Abba. And that's um, what it talks about when it says, Ki Adam that the man is considered as a tree of the field. If you take the gematria of Etz what is it equal to? 474. And if you, look at, if you take the gematria of Da'at, the gematria of Da'at is also 474. Da'at means knowledge. Hmm. The concept of that is also interesting. If you look at it Kabbalistically, it's not knowledge. It's the, the will um, to do, to be able to put into action what we know to be true. 
So we have Chokhmah Bina, those are the two higher sefirot. Underneath that you have Da'at. Da'at is when you are able to take what you have in knowledge and we have an understanding and you're able to put it into action. That's why the, uh, the Gemara says, A Tamihacham that doesn't have Da'at, a carcass is better than him. Why? Because that means that a Tamil Chacham, all this knowledge he has, he's able to put it into action. That's the idea, is that we're able to put into action something that we understand, you know, um, on a level of abstract knowledge. And we're able to put it into action. So, the Peleos talks about the idea of that. It says, Amr Abba Tehnu Whoever doesn't have that, whoever doesn't have the capability to put into action what he knows to be true, it's forbidden to have mercy on him. So somebody who knows that he is in trouble, he's an, he's an addict to something, you name it, whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, whether it's something else, and he's not able to withhold himself, he's just going after his, uh, his desires, it's not good to go and give this person mercy. Why? Because he can probably drag you down or a million other bad things that can happen person has to first put forth some effort, then you can have mercy on them. Whoever person, which we just mentioned, whoever doesn't have da'at, a carcass is better than this person. Why? Because a carcass, you can take it, you can slice the meat up, you can you know, take the skin, you can do something with it. But a, a person or a tabi chacham who doesn't have da'at, he doesn't fulfill his purpose. Kol mi da'at, a person who has that, meaning a person who is able to take what he has in knowledge, abstract knowledge, and put it into uh, action, this person is as if the Beit HaMikdash was built in his days. Uh, further it says, If a person doesn't have that, what can he possibly gain in his life? But if a person has that, whatever he has in knowledge and understanding, he can put into work, what is he, what is he lo- losing in life? Absolutely nothing. Meaning that that is what makes life. That is what makes a person a person. That is what makes us able to have um, accomplishments in life. Whereas if a person doesn't have that, you find all these superstars in Hollywood or in other sports or whatever it is, they, they're at the you know, top of their game, they're at the top of their life, and they get caught for gambling, for you know, all sorts of other you know, illicit actions, drugs being on top of them, and what happens to them? They lose everything. Why? Because there's no doubt, there's no understanding that, hey, I'm at the top of my game here, I'm at the top of whatever it is, I need to lay off a little bit and relax. They don't see the horrible things that happen to them, and in the end, either they commit suicide, they lose all their money, they, you know, all sorts of horrible things that happen to them. That's the idea of that. Uvamet, Vedat Tarik Kol Yehidut. Vechol Shinamut Adam says that the completion of man depends on having Da'at. Vechol Tovat Ha'olam, Azev Ha'olam Aba. And everything that is good in this world and the next world depends on Da'at, being able to put into action what we understand as abstract. So when a person sits down and learns Torah, he has to be able to apply it. That's the whole idea of that, is that you take what you learn and you're able to apply it. And if a person can't apply it, then he's missing out on the truth of life. And he's missing out on all the accomplishments that he can possibly achieve in his life. Why? Because he's not able to apply that knowledge. The application is the key here. So it says in Gemara uh, Gedushin on Daf Mem Amud Bet, it says that the afflictions of a sadiq in this world, meaning that a righteous person who is suffering in this world, they come and atone for his sins so that he can achieve, receive his reward in the world to come. That's another aspect of life in this world. That we look around us and we see, or in our own lives at least, we see so much suffering. You know, there's not many people that I know who uh, don't feel that they're suffering in this world. And if a person is able to weather through it, if he's not bo'et, if he doesn't kick back and he doesn't say, you know what, why is this happening to me? That serves as an atonement for our sins that we've committed to our, towards Hashem. I mean, look at what, he, what he's given us. He's given us life, two hands, two legs, breath of life, you know, food, shelter over our heads. That's, that's you know, the basics that we need to live. And all the other wonderful things on top of that that he's given us. If we don't ha- understand 
um, that these are wonderful things and we're able to weather through the other difficult things that are in our life, if we understand all of these things, then our reward in the world to come is going to be complete. Then we're going to be able to move on to the next step. Then Hashem is going to say, you know what, he learned his lesson, now we can take away the difficulty that he has in his life. Whereas if it, as it brings in Tanah Devilio, a person who doesn't learn from his mistakes and doesn't learn that his uh, difficulties in life are coming because of his own actions, his Yisurim, his difficulties, they don't abate, they don't go away. They, heaven forbid, they can get doubled or even become more than that. So now let's move on. The Mazal of uh, this month is the Li, which is Aquarius, the pale. Um, and the color of the month is blue-green, which represents what? Represents water. The, which also <coughs> represents, the water represents Torah. As HaKam have told us, water and Torah are similar. During this time of the year, what happens? Most of the rains of the season have already come, and they've filled the well so much that the buckets that are dipped into the wells, they don't have to be dropped all the way down, right? As the year goes, as the year goes on, the well water goes down, and you have to drop your bucket lower. But now, because the wells have filled up, you don't have to drop your bucket down so much. So, um, what, is this, what is this coming to teach us? There's a pasuk in Bamidbar that says as follows. Yizal ma'im middallav, mazar'o b'ma'im rabim. So, water will flow from his wells, and his seat shall have abundant water. His king shall be raised over Agag, and his king shall be exalted. We're going to leave that aside. That... This is the blessing that Bil'am gave to the Jews, that water will flow from his wells. The water, remember, we mentioned that the water is Torah. That if a person is able to take all the spiritual blessings that have fallen during this time, the, through the, you know, we had um, Sukkot, we had Shemini uh, Atzeret, and we had, you know, the acceptance of the Torah, and we had all these months where people have been toiling in Torah. It's the months that have had the most night, meaning um, the nights were longer. And we already mentioned through all the other um, shiurim that these were times that were very propitious for sitting down and learning Torah. So all this Torah that we've accumulated, accumulated now we can come and sort of feel the, 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 the fruit of our labors, that all of these are start, going to start, start coming and overflowing. So, all the waters that come down during the, these times, what do they do? They go down into the ground and they ascend, they come up again into the tree and give it new life. The ascent of the water uh, coming up is represented by a pail, or it also, it's also represented by the sap that is coming up into the tree. So, and the, I, this idea is that it's, it's lifting up. It's, li it's, it's, it's here to lift up the person. The letter of the previous month was what? Ein. And the letter of this month is Tzadi. You put the two together, you get Etz. Meaning, whatever we were able to acquire in the previous month, we're able to come and raise it up and bring it to the tree in this month. And remember, we, we, were, we likened the tree to a man. So, Shavat, the month of Shavat, is a new year for the study of Torah as well. That eating of the fruits of Shavat, it corresponds to t partaking uh, of Torah, coming and taking the sweet fruits of Torah wisdom. So, let's look at where Shavat is mentioned in, uh, in the Torah. It says in Rosh Hashanah, and there are four New Year, New Year dates. There's the first of Nisan, the first of Elul, the first of Tishrei, and then there's the first of Shavat, mm -hmm. and according to Beit Hillel, it's the 15th of Shavat. What happens? There's four different kinds of New Years. One of them <laughs> happens to be Shavat. What is it the New Year for? It's the New Year for Orla, meaning that if you plant a tree one day before um, Rosh Chodesh Shavat, what happens? Once Shavat comes, it's as if that tree was already in the ground for one year. It starts its second year, and then three years that pass, you can start partaking of the fruits during the fourth year. After Netar Avayim, that's a whole different thing we'll talk. But the idea of Orla, it depends on Shavat. 
and also Neta Ravai. We're not going to get into the discussion of what that is, and also Maaser Sheni, which is a tide that was eaten in uh, in its uh, its in Yerushalayim. That uh, there are different tides that we have to take from the fruit, and this was dependent on Tu Bishvat. It was also uh, accounted according to Tu Bishvat. So we mentioned that most of the rain has fallen, the sap is coming up the trees, the blossoms, they're turning into fruits during this time, and the, the Maaser Ani, or the Maaser Sheni, is determined during this time, depending on Shavat. So, all of these, the, this wealth of Torah and blessing that's coming, what is it coming to tell us? That a person, he wants to rededicate his, himself to the Torah. If he wants to renew himself in, in the learning of Torah, this is the best time to do it. If a person hasn't had success in attaching himself in, to Torah during the past uh, few months, now is the time that he is going to be given extra siyata dishmaya, help from heaven, to be able to attach himself to Torah. It's the beginning of the preparation for what? The receiving of, receiving of the Torah that's going to come in Sivan. So it says, Ki tatsur el ir yamim rabim, in parashat devarim, it says that when you besiege a city for many days to wage war against it, to capture it, don't destroy its trees. These are the fruit trees by wielding an axe against them. Because you can eat from them, but you should not cut them down. And it continues, it says, Ki ha'adam etz hasadeh, because man is a tree of the field, uh, and you're going to go ahead and use it as a, as a battering ram. So, Rabbi Zera in Ta'anit, he explains as follows, Ki ha'adam etz hasadeh, for man is a tree in the field. And he compares it to what? Ki mimenu tochel ve'oto lo tichrot, because you shall eat of it, and not cut it down. What is it coming to tell us? That if a teacher who is teaching us Torah, if he's worthy, you can go and eat from his, uh, learn from him Torah. But if he is not, you should, what you need to do is you need to cut him down. You need to not go to him. So that, that's another azhara that the, that the Gemara gives us, that a person needs to look for a Torah teacher who is worthy. Someone who can, um, who actually has learned properly and who can teach, uh, to te- teach him the Torah in a way that's going to go into his you know, sort of going to his veins, his spiritual veins. Another way to look at the, the fruit of one's tree is the mitzvot that we do. And we also mentioned that it's a metaphor for a Torah. The tribe of the month is... Oh, and one other thing, sorry. Well, what's the other thing that happened during Shavat? That Moshe, when he started giving, uh, saying Sefer Devarim, it also happened during the month of Shabbat. That speech that he gave, it lasted over five uh, weeks, the, the, um, the last days of his life, that happened during Shabbat. <coughs> so the tribe of the month is the tribe of Asher. I, I, I really was, uh, it could also be, uh, Yosef. Right, right, there's different calculations of how it works, but yeah, um, very good. There, there's actually, according to, according to which Mepharsh you go on the Sefer Yetzirah, it changes. But uh, let's, we're just going to stick with Asher for okay. this one. And the blessing that Asher got was that he has oil that was uh, in the portion of his land. He had the best oil that was in all of Eretz Yisrael, and that's the oil they used to light the menorah inside the Beit HaMikdash and the kings, uh, and, and the, inside the Beit HaMikdash, the Kohanim. Of the seven species uh, uh, that are ma- that we have that come from the land of Eretz er- Israel, which is the sixth one, olives, mm. and in Kabbalah it represents what Yesod, which is what you just mentioned, mm. which is Yosef, which corresponds yeah. to Yosef, and we say, Sadiq Yesod Olam, a Sadiq, a person who is righteous, he is the foundation of the world. Mm. And a per- this, is, this is a person who can you know bend himself as we mentioned, and he sits and he. Um, he subjugates himself to the to, to, to the Torah. So the asod is analogous in a human being to the reproductive organ, and the eyes are the windows to the soul, as we know. So the sadirin have special powers of sight. Why? Because they guard their eyes, and since it always falls in the time of shabbatim, this is exactly what a person needs to be doing during this time. There's a story of Baba Meir. 
And it goes like this. They came to him and they said there was a girl that was kidnapped. By whom? They don't know. This happened in London. And they came to Mary's Israel. They told him, we have this girl that was kidnapped. We don't know where to find her. We've been looking. The police have been looking all over her. They can't find her. So he sat down with them. And on a piece of paper, he drew for them the streets of London. And he said, you go through this street over here, over there. And you're going to find her on the third floor inside of this building over here. Question is, how is he able to, to, to know exactly what it was? Most people think that this is from Ruha Godesh. He had the Holy Spirit. That's why he was able to see this. That's not the case. A person who was able to guard his eyes. If we, it's known that the, that the Abu Hasera family and Rabbi Meir, they were very, very um, meticulous with guarding their eyes. When they would go outside, they would have something that would guard their eyes before they went out. They went out. Hmm. So... Because he was so meticulous in this one mitzvah of guarding his eyes, from where he was in Eretz Yisrael, he was able to see straight all the way to London and was able to see the streets with his eyes as he was looking over there. He was given the, uh, the, the, the gift of eyesight. Now there's a, the exact opposite as well. There, there's a story of the Baal Shem Tov that it comes, he comes on Erev Yom Kippur, the time of Kol Nidre. And they look at his face, and his face is very, very dark, and he's not happy. They see that he's, it's not, something's not right. Mm -hmm. He gets up from his seat, walks outside, goes to the komer, he goes to the priest, uh, the local priest, and he has a conversation with him. Finishes the conversation, comes back, and he's smiling, and you see that his, his tefillah is a proper tefillah, and, the, and you feel the walls shaking. It's, it's, it's an amazing tefillah, that Yom Kippur. And the students, they couldn't wait till Yom Kippur was over. They, they went to the Baal Shem Tov. They said, w w what is this that, uh, you know, um, in the middle of Kol Nidre, you pick up and you go and you speak to this Komer. This doesn't make any sense. He says, you don't understand. <coughs> I saw there was a, that there was an evil decree on the Jews. And as much as I tried, I couldn't nullify the decree. And what was the evil the decree? That the Jews, they are not careful when they go out into the world, when they're with, with their eyes. So as much as I tried, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't nullify this. There, there's actually an interesting uh, other story about the Baal Shem Tov. It says that one, <clears throat> one of the, um, at once with that shlishit, you know that uh, the tzaddikim, they have an aliyat neshama. You go to any of the chassidish tishes, doing so with that the rabbi wraps a towel around his hand and he has an aliyat neshama. What that means, I don't know exactly, but he's able to ascend into the upper worlds. So, this is something that was happening with the Baal Shem Tov, and they see that he's in another world. He comes back then and they say, Rebbe, what did you see? He says, I saw a sight that I couldn't understand. The angels, they came and they took me up, and they were going and going and going up, and they took me to this wall, and I said, when is this wall going to end? He said, this is not a wall. This is a pot. Pot? Who needs such a big pot? And they finally took me to the top of the pot, and I was able to peer over, and I saw... He said, It's full of hands and legs and different parts of the body. He says, What is this? Why is there so many body parts in this pot? He says, This is the body parts that are going to be megalit. These are the ones, the, the, the people who are not shomer tzenyut, that they don't dress modestly. This is what is going to be waiting for them. You know, once they, you know, this is the punishment for those body parts that they were exposing you know, during their life. Obviously, this is metaphorical, not to be taken literal, but the idea is, is still the same. So, the Baal Shem Tov, he told his students, when I went to this priest and I spoke to him, I was told from, from the heavens that this priest is a true Sadiq. Why? Because he's never looked at anything that is not proper. So I went to the priest and I described to him, you know, a, a scene of the marketplace and the, the people that are around there, the women, the men, whatever. And it's exactly when he f heard about these things, he had a, a, a bad thought. So I went and I pleaded to the heavens and I said, look, these Jews every day and night, they're going into the marketplace and yet they're still able to, you know, fight it and they're still able to keep their purity. And look at this person. He never had any Nisayun. He never had a test. And he, 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 even though he didn't have a test at the smallest you know, drop of a pin, he, um, he, he had issues. But when it comes to the Jews, they go to the marketplaces and they come back and they're able to save themselves. They're able to hold themselves back. 
So from here we see what? That a person who is able to hold himself back despite the trouble, that's, um, that's what is praiseworthy. And that's what happened with the Baal Shabda, He was able to negate the evil decree as a result of this. Because the Jews were able to keep themselves despite the fact that they went into the market <coughs> place. It says, The king in his view, you shall, your eyes shall behold, they shall see from a distant land. This, appear, this is exactly what happens with people who are able to keep their eyes holy. That they're able to see the king in his beauty, Hashem, the world that he has saved for those people who are Shomer Enayim. Asher, the word Asher, which represents the tribe, it is also um, it also means pleasure and happiness. And he blessed Asher to have delicious bread or fat bread that he's uh, he, he and he's going to be given the delicacies of the king. So we see that Asher has a connection to the taste of the sense of taste, and the sense of this month is eating, taste, thought, and smell. And the organ of the month is. Korkeban or Geva or the right foot, they all have some sort of a connection. Korkeban is stomach, in one interpretation, it's the stomach. It says in Mishle, in Proverbs, Sadiq Ochel Nesova Nafsho. A Sadiq only eats, eats as much as he needs to um, satiate himself. Uvet in Rishaim Tehsar. But the stomach of the wicked, it's always going to be lacking, it's always going to need more. So the idea of a tzaddik is that he's able to satisfy himself with whatever he needs, and he doesn't take more than that. And the rishayim, they're never satisfied with what they have. They always need more. Whether, and it's not just something that goes inside the body into your stomach, but it's always material things, that they want more and more and more. Rabbi Nachman says that a person who wants to grow spiritually, he can do so by eating, through eating. If he can control himself in eating, he can achieve the greatest heights spiritually. But he's, if he is constantly obsessed with food for the sake of eating, he's going to be stuck spiritually. That's what it means, Bet and Rashaim Tehsar. And peace and prosperity, they go hand in hand. However, hunger brings strife and war. A craving for food is a sign that one has enemies, and by breaking the need to eat, one was, will be able to make peace with his enemies. It says in Gemara Barachot that the stomach sleeps. One who does not use his mind in order to achieve in his life, he's considered as being asleep. So sleep may be brought by eating in the wrong manner or the wrong foods. One who eats, he can become confused. Why? Because the qaliput, in everything that we eat, there are positive aspects, meaning positive um, uh, positive uh, lights and there's negative lights. And if a person is not able to properly separate these, or he eats too much of them, these negative lights, they come and they attach them and they bring him down spiritually. So a person's lust for food is one of the in indications of his distance from the truth. Because of their eating, I will hide my face from them, as it says. So if a person doesn't eat in excess, he can clearly direct his life. But if he eats in excess, he loses his capability to be able to think clearly. So the diet, the way a person um, goes, uh, conducts his diet is going to depend how he conducts his life and his neshama. He, if he eats too much, if he doesn't eat properly, he brings sleep upon himself and he confuses his own thoughts. So what about the right foot? So the Sadiqim, these are the leaders. They go amongst the people and they mingle with them and they advise them properly. And that's the idea. If a person is able to achieve something or is able to you know, conquer a certain Yetzirah, one of the ways of Teshuvah is to go to other people who have the same issue and he is able to help them out. And that's the idea of, uh, of the feet. That the person uses his feet to go and do good. So, just as a quick summary, a person's desire to unite with the Torah will bear, bear fruit this month. That if a person wants to attach himself to the Torah and he puts forth some effort, he has extra siyata dishmaya, extra help from heaven. A person who controls his eating can destroy, can control his destiny or can destroy his destiny. And in order to achieve the ultimate level a person can achieve, which is the sadiq, a person has to be malleable, meaning that he has to forego his ego, he has to bend, and he has to 
follow the Torah and Mitzvot. Hashem is Zakenu. Bein, yes, the Kuna Klali.